Welcome back students. In the last couple of lectures we saw how we can set up a PostGIS database on a remote web host server. In this lecture I'm going to show you how you can actually move your database itself from localhost to the remote server. And so we're still using pgadmin on the localhost. But on the remote server we're going to have to use PHP admin. And they serve the same functionality but they have a little bit different interfaces. So the first thing I'm going to do is open my databases tab and go to my SDB course database. And I could move one table at a time if I wanted to do that. But what I'm going to do is move in and make a backup of the entire schema. Then I'm going to open that backup on the remote database. And so I'm going to go to the public schema and right click on it. And then I'll go down to the backup option. And we have a couple different options. The first thing I'm going to do is change the format from custom to plain. Then I'll make the backup in plain text SQL statements. We can open up in any text editor and take a look at or even read if we wanted to. And then next I'm going to choose a file name. And my file name I'm going to call it sdbpublic.sql. And I'll click create. So I'm going to create a plain text SQL file with this name at this location. And then I'm going to set some options as well. So under dump options, I'm going to leave these first two sections the same. But then I'm going to say do not save the owner, do not save the privilege, and do not save the table space as well. Even though we haven't really been using table spaces. And the reason is that we're probably going to have a different set of owners and a different set of table spaces on the remote server than we do on localhost. And those owners will have different privileges as well. So we don't want to include that stuff when we create a SQL file. We want to open that SQL file and run it under whatever user we happen to be using on the remote server. And then I like to use insert commands. I think it's a little bit easier to understand. If we happen to want to open it or even modify it as a text file before we open it and actually run it on the remote server. And I'm not going to use the include database or drop database statements because oftentimes you won't have permission to do that on the remote server, which is why you have to use some of those tools in cPanel to actually create a new database rather than using a SQL statement. And that's all the options I'm going to set. So I'm just going to come down here and click backup. You'll see that the backup job was created. It did the whole thing in only five seconds. If I go to that location, on my local computer, we're down here to C, Farina, GIS data, and we can see I have this SQL file that I just created. It's three and a half megabytes in size. Now I want to see what this file looks like, so I'm going to open it in brackets. You can open it in any text editor though. It's just a simple text file. And we'll see it sets some parameters. Then there's a series of create statements that set up some of the database objects that we had on the local host, including the domains that we created. We have some functions that we defined. We create some tables and some sequences for those tables. Then there's some SQL statements to set the default values for our ID fields to the next value of a sequence. So this is what makes them auto incrementing. And then we have a bunch of insert statements. And this is where our data gets loaded into the tables that were created previously. So all it is is SQL. It's just a bunch of plain text SQL statements. That should be easy to understand if you've been following this course. And so the next thing that we're going to do now that we have our backup is I'm going to go log into A2 Hosting. I'll go down to this domain that we created in the last lecture. By the way, I'd like to say in the last lecture I made a little mistake when I set this up and I had a mistake in the domain name. That was just because I was using a domain that I already had registered. Anyhow, I just opened a support ticket with A2 Hosting and told them what happened and they took care of it in two hours. No problem. So I'm going to give them five stars for support in this case. So I'm just going to go to my cPanel login and come down to my databases section. Click on PHP PG Admin. And I see the database that I had set up in the last lecture. If we look under the public schema and under the table section, 
Let's see, we still only have that one table that we have set up in there. And we don't have any sequences. We don't have any domains. And we do have a bunch of functions, but it's just the PostGIS functions that are loaded by default. So for instance, if I come down, see there's no add function like we've created earlier in the course. That's part of the database that we exported. And so I'm going to go to the database that we created and I'm going to open a SQL window. But instead of writing my own SQL, I'm going to upload a SQL script. And that's that SQL script that we exported using pgadmin4. And so I'm going to navigate to that same location. It was Farina, GIS data. And then this sdb public dot sql statement and I often get bad results if you leave this checked so i'm going to uncheck it the paginate results you usually only want to leave that check if you're using a sql select statement and then i'm going to click execute and you'll see it ran that entire sql statement and it happens very fast because it's happening on the server but you see, we did get a couple errors, and those errors mainly relate to these sequences. But we have a bunch of insert statements. They all seem to work. At the end, again, we get some errors related to these sequences. I'm not sure why the sequences are such a problem, but they seem to be. And now we'll notice that we do have all our tables in here. We still don't have any sequences. If we look at the functions, now we do have these two add functions and a couple other functions as well that we created. And we know that it's something that we created because if we look for it here, we see that the owner is FootRaceDB because that's the user that I was logged in when I ran the SQL statement. And you can see that we have our domains as well. And so everything came in, our functions, our domains, everything except for the sequences. And so we might be able to play around with the uh, settings and get that to work. But we could also just rebuild our sequences. So we're in the public schema. We can go to sequences. We can create a sequence and just give it the name, the minimum, maximum, starting value, etc. So we could create those sequences from new and we'd be back where we're going. So it wasn't perfect. But the important thing is that we got all that data. And we can see that just by entering a SQL statement and we'll say select everything from raptor nest and then I'll come down here and execute and we'll see there's a table we have our geometry all of our data and so we have all our data in the database and that's the most important thing we can deal with the sequences easily enough it might have to do with the fact that the database on localhost is PostGIS 10, and the database that's running on the server is, is uh, PostgreSQL 9.6. So anyhow, I'll try and look into that a little bit more. But that's the process. Thanks for listening. This was just one lecture in an entire course on spatial databases focused on PostGIS and QGIS. And this course is available now on udemy.com. It has more than 70 lectures and 11 hours of content. And I'm adding more content all the time. And you can get it now for only $20 with the coupon code COURSE5. And if you're interested, you're also welcome to check out my other courses on WebGIS and QGIS. And you can get more information on those at the following location. Or you can just Google Geospatial Brainstorming Courses. And it should take you right to this site.